Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and on July the 16th, if all goes according to plan, there will be a new version of Blender. Blender 4.2 uh, is shipping that day, in theory at least, and what we're going to do is jump in and take a look at some of the most exciting new features in this particular release, starting with what you see in front of you, uh, and this is the new EV Render. EV Next is here, all kinds of new features in this particular release, including uh, a removal of the limitation of number of lights in the scene. You can now have an infinite number of lights in your scene, although you can only have only uh, 4,096 active at a time. Additionally, the global illumination system has been completely rewritten. The way that emissions work has been rewritten. Basically, they have modernized EV, EV being their real-time rendering solution. Uh, so if you are using this for games, you're going to get a much more um, close a match to what it will look like in your actual game engine and then on top of that there's things like depth of field now for your camera and so on so lots of neat improvement to this particular release by the way uh, this scene you see in front of you if you are a blender user and a game developer and probably both of those in fact uh, you probably want to know about this by the way it's going on right now it's a humble bundle an awesome humble bundle for blender users if you did not already know about it you can get retopo flow bake ma bake master a couple of other baking solutions as well uh, rig you UV flow, face it, uh, and then a bunch of asset packs and exporters for various different game engines, UV pack master, and more, all for like 30 bucks USD. So if you are a Blender user, you probably want to know about this bundle, and that is what you're seeing in action in this particular video. This is the uh, Cyberpunk Alley, so in case you were wondering. So anyways, that is feature number one, EV, the new real-time renderer. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check out that bundle, the links are down below. Now the next cool new feature is the extension system. We're going to check that one out. We'll go up here to edit. We'll go to preferences and you'll notice there is Git extensions available right here. And you can say, okay, allow online access is what we want to do. And then what we'll do is check for updates to our extensions. And what you're going to notice here is all of the various different extensions that are available for uh, Blender itself are available right here. You can also check out a list of all of the official extensions that are available by going to extensions.blender.org. They are all available right here. You can download them this way, by the way, as well, and then use them uh, via a file install that way. Uh, but now this integration is actually directly into, you see here you got 170 extensions, official extensions here supported. Uh, these are now available directly inside of Blender. So if you want to go ahead and add uh, a new one here. So let's do, uh, for example, uh, noise nodes. For example, if I wanted to add that one in, basically just come on in here and I can install it like so. Uh, and we've now installed our extension in, and you'll see it's available right here. Uh, so that is how easy it is actually to get extensions in now. Uh, you can also port to other repositories, by the way. Uh, you can also search for themes. Uh, so a variety of different themes are available and can be installed using this mechanism as well. So basically, the extension system is now built directly into uh, Godot 4.2. This is going to make um, the add-on marketplace so much easier and more cohesive. But definitely a nice feature in that regard. Regard. Now this next one, collection exports, is going to be an absolute game changer for certain people, especially if you use Blender as your primary content creation solution and you export it out to game engines, especially if you export out multiple formats. So if you're uploading to like Sketchfab or an asset store or something to that effect, and you need to export out into different formats or you organize your things into collections, like say for example, this particular building, if I want to export all of the contents from here, it is now super simple. So in order to do this now, what you do is you pick the collection that you wish to export. So we'll do this top level one right here. You go down here to the collection category for it, and you will now notice there is this new exporters category. So right now, if I go to my file menu, there is this export all collections, uh, but you'll notice it is actually currently grayed out. So what I can now do is come on over here and I say, okay, I'm going to add an exporter and I'm going to export out GLTF. And you're going to notice the minute that this is export or set up, I can pick where to go ahead and export it out, the uh, file format. So I could do binary or otherwise and various different settings and controls over how we want to do our GLTF export. So all your properties for your export are defined down here below. And then you could go ahead and boom, do an export export all. At the same time, I could come down here and say, okay, I also want to export out the FBX and you got all your configurations for that FBX as well. So now you're going to notice that this collection now has this little icon beside it. So if I want now with all of these done, I can click export all and they will all, all the exporters for that collection will be evoked. Also, you'll notice here, if you've got a bunch in your scenes, this is now enabled. So you can export your entire scene of collections that have exporters defined all in one fell swoop. Again, if this fits 
fits your workflow, this is going to change your life in a lot of ways. It's going to make some processes of exporting out a bunch of things where you previously probably did it individually. Now it's pretty much a one-click process. And if you export out in multiple file formats, this is even better. And finally, a few more very cool features. I'm just going to quickly show the overview of. The next one up is Ray Portal BSDF. Now, this is a cycles only thing. And what it is basically allowing you to do is cheat in your ray tracing. We can say all of the rays that come in at a certain location here go somewhere else. What it allows you to do is more or less create portals. So you can see an example of a portal being created using geometry nodes. You may wonder, okay, why would you want this node? Well, one of the classic examples is setting up a camera. So you could create a camera type effect. So all of the uh, rays that go into the, here, this area, are actually rebroadcast to where the camera, I guess it would technically be this part of the screen right here, are being redirected somewhere else in the scene. So it allows you to create these portal effects. And you can see the actual code being used to create this virtualized camera effect. So it's going to open up the world to a whole lot of really cool special effects. That's the new Ray Portal BSDF node. Sadly, this is cycles only, so it will not work in EV. Uh, which is a bit of a shame. We also have a new uh, color mode here. So a new tone mapper. Uh, this is the Kronos. Uh, so that's the people behind the Vulkan API, OpenGL, etc. They have the Kronos PBR neutral tone mapper. And the entire idea behind this or the use case is photography. It use cases where the scene is well lit and ex well exposed, sorry, and HDR color values are mostly restricted to smaller spectrum highlights. So here you can see the standard tone mapper, the AGX tone mapper, and then the Kronos PBR neutral tone mapper in action. I think in most cases, you're going to want to use AGX, I think, but you can see a pretty uh, profound difference between, and in some cases, and in some scenarios, it just looks way, way better. So they've got a breakdown of the considerations and the, and the details around it, etc., available in that linked article down below. So we do have that new Kronos PBR neutral tone mapper available. And a final thing that we're going to talk about today is in the land of sculpting. We got a bunch of new sculpting tools here. Uh, so all trim, face set, mask, and high tools now have the line and polyline counterparts. So polyline here and polyline trim here. So you can see the results here is polyline being used to do a hide. Uh, and basically you're drawing with a polyline shape like that, like that, and then done, and then boom, you can hide. And here is the um, the grow and shrink being done the same way. Uh, this is again using poly there. So you'll be able to trim things in this manner as well as, so pretty much everything. So um, you've got poly mask, hide, face set, and trim all have polyline and line trim features available. So those were the coolest new features in my humble opinion of Blender 4.2. Let me know what you liked the best as well. And once again, a reminder, if you are a Blender user, especially if you are a Blender user doing game development, uh, this bundle is just phenomenal. Again, you can get Retopo Flow, Bake Master, um, better FBX exporter, a bunch of assets. That's just this one we used all the way through this demo. Auto bake, game rig tools, uh, rig, UV flow, uh, face it, and more, uh, as well as UV Packmaster 3. Now, they are a snapshot in time, is I believe how this works, but again, it, it is a very, very cheap way of getting a bunch of very good Blender add ons. So, if you're interested, that link for that is available down below. But, ladies and gentlemen, Blender 4.2, what do you think? What feature do you like the best? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.